Sure. Okay, so uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Francesco from uh, Meta Cooperativa, and uh, this is the fourth uh, webinar uh, in uh, five webinar that we are running regarding uh, the role playing game uh, in general. And in particular, today we're going to talk about uh, RPG online and, uh, and how to deal with it and how, what are the platforms, uh, what are the tools, uh, what are the tips and tricks to run uh, a smoothly campaign. And um, I'm not alone today. I'm with uh, Helias uh, that support us uh, for the technical part. And uh, I, I'm also with uh, Barbara. Uh, uh, who will talk uh, and uh, yeah, will share some knowledge uh, for us today. Uh, so, um, before starting, actually, uh, some of you might uh, also have uh, joined the other webinar um, and uh, we'll leave some uh, assignments. Uh, I don't know if some of you uh, tried uh, or wants to share some of a knowledge experience uh, how it goes. So it was about, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, uh, implementing a role-playing game activity. And so I'm wondering, any of you, um, I don't know, tried anything, want to say something about this? Can I share? Sure. Uh, I am Natasha and uh, I'm representing uh, the team called uh, the RPG Lodge. Okay. Uh, we're based in Thessaloniki. And yes, it's really nice to, to listen to this webinar. Like our, our main activity is practically to making some gathering events for RPG. So once a month, uh, we meet and we play several games and we have done some like online talking <clears throat> i can share you later the links about our facebook page that's great page. thank you um did you uh, try something recently or um it, it's about a properly tabletop role-playing game it was about a board game so it's about a larp experience what is about if you want to share uh, before COVID, we were only playing, um, like we were gathering and playing a tabletop, but okay. then uh, we, we hosted also some online events. That's good. And uh, what platform did you use for uh, the online things? Uh, for uh, talking and chatting and gathering up, we used uh, Discord and okay. then we used uh, Roll20. That's great. And some sometimes uh, google hangouts that's great and uh, how they went uh, were you happy uh, about those uh, experiences and feedbacks were you satisfied in general yes we were not expecting and also we had the opportunity to meet people that are not in our city also i'm not living in the same city with my let's say partners in the team so it was nice to do something together even if we don't live in the same place and also like people participate there as well that's great yes i agree i think that uh, the gen the digital thing uh, allows a lot of freedom in order to um, gather people even uh, from distant places or uh, during the pandemic of course uh, when uh, it wasn't possible to go out it was uh, a huge opportunity for some of us in particular actually i take the chance to talk about uh, um, uh, this uh, digital thing, the, the tabletop role-playing games, during the, uh, the pandemic uh, uh, were used a lot in our cooperativa, the Meta Cooperativa. And uh, um, it was great uh, because it was a really um, a fundamental tool to keep, keep in touch with the youth and uh, allowed us to, uh, to link the people during that uh, period of time. It was uh, a great opportunity, I think. So thank you uh, for your uh, sharing. So um, if um, some of you wants to share something, some thoughts, otherwise we move on. 
and I would uh, like to, uh, I will leave Barbara introducing uh, some aspects uh, she will talk about. And uh, so let's start. All right, guys. Hello, uh, I'm Barbara and I'm representing Inspire from Czech. Now I will be sharing my screen. Uh, if there is some, any issue and you cannot see my screen, please let me know, I can adjust it. We will. But hope <laughs> works. No. So let's start from the beginning. Uh, what different kinds of RPG can you implement online? I will be introducing, as you can see on the outline, uh, text RPGs, audio, video, call, ex executed RPGs, and game books, which are also called hyperlink fictions. And then there will be a quick discussion about what you think, what uh, would be your preferred uh, style of RPG, if you have any experience with any of them, and so on. So, Text RPGs are in general uh, the most comfortable one for most people because you have a time and your own peace and pace in writing what your character is doing. I have a, uh, <laughs> this is RPG we are playing with my friends. Uh, um, excuse me, uh, I'm sorry, it's in Czech only. I do not play any English RPG, but this is what text RPG looks like. Each of the player has their own character and they are writing what their character is doing, what they are saying. And this way we are creating a story. Uh, it is kind of like co-creating a fan fiction or a book or just a written story. Uh, there are two main times. One of them is RPGs in real time when all of the players are sitting at their computers or wherever they are playing and the same time and they are responding uh, immediately as the message from the previous player arrives. Now this in real time uh, kind of text RPG uh, is the best for the immersion. You are in the moment as, you, as if you are reading a book, you are just going through the story, you are in the character, you feel the stuff, it's really I love it, it's my favorite. I grew up on text RPGs. But on the other hand, you have to reserve a certain amount of time and it can be really exhausting because you are reading and writing for, I don't know, from one hour up to four hours, depending on how intense the scene is, how much time you and your party uh, have and so on. So it can be exhausting. But for me, it is better experience, uh, more intense experience. Now, the forum style, it's about longer chunks of descriptions of what your character is doing. And they are posted over a longer period of time. For instance, uh, I write what my character is doing on Monday when I get off work, and another player writes what their what their character did in response in Wednesday when they are on a tram or something. So the pace is a lot slower and the information in a text, there is more information in text. And in general, you have more time to think through what you want to do, what would the really the character, how would they respond? And also it gives you the advantage of extreme freedom in character creation because you are not so much limited by what you as a player know and uh, know not. Uh, what you can do and can do not. Uh, so for instance, if I, who do not know anything about biology, would like to play, uh, I don't know, uh, PhD genetics, I could do it in form style because I would have the time to look up the smart words on Wikipedia and I could, sound smart, which I could not do in a real time or in real time played game. So there's this, then there are audio video calls. I guess that's the most uh, used and known kind of 
online RPG playing. Uh, I'm mentioning both of those because they are different. Uh, first, I will start with audiovisual. <laughs> audiovisual is kind of easier because you have a lot of means by which you can express yourself and express what your character is doing. You can not only talk and use your face, look, use what you are trying to say, what your character is feeling. You can also, uh, you know, use costumes, for instance. This is one of our plays we had with my friends and the costumes do a lot because, you know, it looks, it gets you in a mood. <laughs> and, and they are fun. And they are fun. Actually, that's the skirt I have on, at my head. It's a skirt I just put over my head. And <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can use movements, even though you cannot touch other players as you would in in real life uh, game. You can still use your hands and try to uh, show what you are trying to do, because a lot of time it's easier to show than tell or describe. Also. The connection to others is better. In general, this is the easiest way to connect to the game, the story. Uh, when you are doing only audio, uh, there is a bigger challenge in trying to express yourself in voices and sounds only. You can also use music. It's a nice uh, touch to it. It can be more fun and can be more interesting. And it can definitely be more comfortable because when you are doing in real life uh, meeting or online with video call, you have to look like a something all the time because people are seeing what you are doing. Uh, that can be sometimes problem. Also, when you are online, I right now can see my video here and it's making me super nervous which is distracting me. And if I would be playing, it would be distracting me enormously from being my character because I'm seeing what I'm looking like and I might not like it and I might start acting differently. And in voice calls or audio only calls, this is not a problem. Also, it can be more comfortable that you can be lying in a bed and just listening to it as a podcast and reacting when you feel the time. But it can be hard to keep your attention because you are not so forced to listen. Uh, you are not, uh, people do not see when your uh, mind or eyes are drifting away. So there can be a moment when you just are staring in a blank space and thinking about what you will have for a dinner. And then you find out that instant if in a, being in a tavern, you are already fighting a dragon. And if anything, it's really rude to not listen what your players are, what your co-players are doing. Are you talking uh, for personal experience, Barbara? <laughs> uh, yes. For the dragons yes. in tavern, I mean. <laughs> I have a great problem with keeping my attention and online role playing is super hard on me in this case. It's really challenging to keep my attention. So me and my party, we decided for my own sake, to make uh, regular breaks after one hour. So I can, I don't know, just clear my head a bit, do something else, uh, go outside or something. And then we come back and then we are playing again. It's not ideal because we are breaking the role play, but it's better because it then works. I'm not, you know, they are not missing important parts. <laughs> and the last thing I want to talk about are game books, which as I mentioned uh, before are also called called Hyperlink Fiction, which I, for instance, didn't know. So if you are interested in further research, look it up. Uh, game books, you may know also as a physical booky thing. When you open the book and you are going to a num pa numbers of, to a pages of certain numbers, uh, according to your decisions, you do uh, as the story continues. But it is necessary to say it is the Fully create is fully create pre-created story, and you as a player do not have any creative input, which can be uh, fine for some people because they are stressing over, I don't know, not being funny enough or not being cool enough, and this may be a good start uh, to get into 
the world of role playing. But on the other hand, sometimes you know you may not be satisfied with the pre-written paths because there are still multiple paths, or story paths you can follow, uh, but not but not always the options are not always what you as a person would do. Uh, but we are using game books a lot at our LARPs when we are creating uh, tiny encounters with some uh, creatures or in some at some locations. We are making mini game books with like uh, 10 to 20 decision points which are really just for the players to have some fun and they are really basic and then can be a nice, like, um, nice detail to a whole campaign or, or to a whole, uh, to a whole LARP. But if made as a thing that is working on its own, they need to have, there is a lot of work a game master or a creator has put into it and they can be really demanding, but, I read some really good game books and all the people who makes it because it's super hard, hard and but also fun. So go for it, try to read it, try to create something. Always say you know, to ask yourself, what would I do? Would I run? Would I go forward? And options if uh, do a lot. Now we can Different games and different stories are more suitable for different mediums. For instance, uh, if you want to do something really, uh, some action with pirates and something, it probably will not be perfect for text RPGs as they are more complicated, uh, as there is more complicated to describe really what is happening. It's harder to decide who is when, who is not, because there are no uh, rules usually. On the other hand, when you want, when you know you are limited to play uh, audio only, it would definitely be good to think about it when creating a story or a campaign. For instance, uh, create a world in which we are in the middle of apocalypse, and the players can only talk to each other through uh, walkie-talkies. So they cannot really see each other, make it part of the story. So it, it makes sense, it's better, it's more engaging. You know, you can always work with what you have, but in the end you have to, it's, it's better to try stuff out, to find out what to do most. Because sometimes I just am in a mood to play RPG and my friend play online. So you play online and then I want to show or see my place, face. So I am playing text RPGs. So that's about it. Now, for a discussion, uh, does anybody here have any experience with any of the styles I mentioned? What uh, what do you like the most? What do you prefer? Tell Actually, me. there's already a comment in the chat. Yeah, I will commit. Agreed on the attention part. Okay. I got to keep focus and understanding what was going on. Uh, yeah, really, the attention is a big problem, especially online. I will talk about it a little bit in my next presentation about online tools you create online campaign and i will talk about session zero uh, during session zero uh, usually players and the game master talk about what they are comfortable with what they are not and uh, like what do they need so if there would be a session zero at your rpg there would be probably some agreement on how to make breaks so you keep your attention. Or for instance, that you need to see a video or pictures to keep your attention. So yeah, that's a problem. And if you will be game mastering any campaign, any story, uh, if you think about it, 
because game masters, as they are uh, taught or like part of the story all the time, they sometimes forgot that some players are not. Uh, Okay, anything else say to ask? Personally, I agree uh, with uh, uh, you have been said, in particular on the thing um, at least that it really mattered to me. It was about uh, experimenting. So it's uh, not really about something that is the best solution, uh, but um, role-playing game is a vast world and uh, it can be really funneled in a lot of different ways. And uh, I agree in the, in the fact that uh, experimenting is always good because it uh, gives you uh, an awareness of what works best for that situation in particular um, even uh, audio only or text only uh, exper experiences could be great in the right moment with the right people so um, yeah i think that uh, it's uh, it's more about the personal experience after all yeah definitely <laughs> So, uh, Barbara, if you have done, I uh, can continue. If uh, yeah, I guess I'm done. Nobody wants to to share some thoughts or feelings about this. Uh, so, uh, role playing games are uh, most importantly about stories, and uh, there are tools, of course. Uh, like the the one we have been talking about, the Discord, the Skype, uh, um, but also virtual tabletops like Roll Twenty, Foundry VTT, Fantasy Grounds, and stuff like that. But the main point is they all serve the purpose of storytelling, the story. So I think that uh, um, you, as a facilitator or a youth worker, uh, you should also considering yes, of course, uh, learning how to handle the right tools, uh, um, a game set, a game, uh, the rules of the game. So first, of course, uh, you are supposed, if you want to implement um, a live, uh, a, a digital um, storytelling session of role-playing game, you first have supposed to decide which kind of games, for example, Dungeons & Dragons 5e is one of the most popular uh, role-playing game, but it's not the only one. There are tons, dozens of many others. Uh, first decide what kind of games, then focus on uh, what kind of platforms you're gonna use. And then of course, uh, decide uh, the story you want to tell. Uh, the story depends of course on the, uh, your purposes, your educational uh, aims, but um, the, the idea, the suggestions of the story, it can be brought from uh, what uh, your experience actually. You can invent by yourself, but you also can be uh, influenced by uh, TV shows or books or media or uh, a good movie that you watched. And uh, if you keep that frame in mind and you alter some uh, and modify some characters, some details, uh, you will find out that you come up with a story pretty soon and pretty easily. So um, I suggest you to keep the thing, the right things in mind and keep, uh, keep it as easy as possible because uh, storytelling is an art. And uh, like many other arts, uh, you can dive into it like for an eternity, for your life actually without uh, reaching the death of, the, of that world. But uh, it's also true that uh, it can be really easy if you focus on the right things. So the story, and I suggest you to, to starting uh, uh, in particular from the, if you are a beginner 
um, I suggest you to be influenced by some movies, TV shows, video games, or stuff like that. So it's a pretty well already made story. Uh, you can also be influenced, of course, from the sources of uh, internet. There's uh, so many chronicles already made for you to, uh, to, to use at your advantage. And uh, to decide the game, of course, this is about, about some rules and uh, stuff like stuff good to know. And also, uh, uh, and, and now I am arriving to the today's topic, uh, choose your platform. And today we're going to talk to about uh, Roll20. That's probably one of the most uh, famous virtual tabletops that allows you um, to host a session or join them as a player. And, uh, and the, uh, the point is uh, to uh, decide what are the main infos, the main point, the crucial points, and start from there. Um, but first, um, also keeping in mind that uh, in virtual tabletops, uh, it's not about the audio and video things. Um, that's more about the live tabletop. The digital um, platform, uh, um, often need uh, some materials, some music, some pictures, some tokens, uh, some maps, and this material uh, you're supposed to collect uh, on the internet. There are some a lot of website, uh, or, or, or you can find some of those items in Roll Twenty itself. Uh, in order to make some visual impact, some also some uh, uh, some music for the atmosphere, as Barbara said. I don't want to, uh, I don't know if Barbara wants to add something else about uh, the online tools that can support you. Yes, I can. Uh, again, I will try to share my screen. Um, Please tell me if you can see the presentation. Yes. 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 Perfect. All right. So speaking of tools, uh, I try to condense them into four most important uh, groups that are most important if, if you want to run an online campaign. Now, the first one will be platforms for communication. The second one will be platforms for note taking, then maps and setting creators. And the last but not least, the gameplay. And then I uh, will mention some details, of course, and there will be conclusion. Now, for communication, there is important to mention the foreshadow session zero. Uh, when you are playing a normal, uh, normal game or campaign, you usually meet with other players and your game master to talk a bit about who you, if you don't know each other, to meet, meet to uh, uh, tell about to say what experience with RPG do you have? What do you expect from this campaign or from this game? Uh, for instance, what are your triggers, which are really important to know for everybody else in your party, so they can avoid uh, making you uncomfortable while playing. And when playing online, we use something called session 0.0, .0 when we meet before anything else, and we settle down on which platform will we be using. Before, because we found out that every device, every computer, for some reason, prefers Different, uh, different software. They work differently. They, uh, we don't know <laughs> how it works, but it is what it is. So there are things like Discord, which are quite multi-purpose, but at the same time, we tend to have quite a lot of issues. There are platforms like Zoom, which, on the other hand, are uh, really good and reliable but they are paid for, or you are limited to 45 minutes, I believe. It was like that like a year ago. And after uh, 45 minutes, you the meeting would shut down and you would have to start again, which is not really desired when you are in the middle of a 
unimportant scene. So here are just some tips. In general, this whole presentation will be about me giving you tips, uh, which I consider to be a good starting point. But by any change, do not feel limited or to use them. Yes, they are just something for you to get inspired. Um, when it comes to notes, we found out that it's always best to use what people are comfortable with. So if you are used to using Facebook a lot, by all means, create a Facebook group and post information or documents about your character and sessions and discoveries to a Facebook group. Me and my friends are really used to using Discord. So we have uh, all the notes on Discord. We have different channels for different kind of stuff. Also, we are using quite often Google Docs and Discs. I have a, ooh, what it work? I'm sorry, because my internet is running a bit slow, but I hope my shared Google disk look like it would it was just a shared Google Docs uh, folder where we me my game master shared document I wrote reports there from every session he gave me a visions because I was playing for a uh, for a fortune teller and we exchange it like that because we both were used to using Google Documents and we felt comfortable with it. Also, there are more complex and I don't know fancy tools you can work you can use like Word of Anvil. And again, I will not even try to open it because it would break my computer. In. <sighs> Probably I don't know. Uh, map creators. Then again, you don't have to be fancy when playing RPGs online. Or generally, you don't have to be fancy when playing any RPGs. You can keep it simple. But sometimes if you have the time, if you have the energy, if you have the ideas, you can make it more fancier because your players will appreciate it. They will like uh, well-done maps. They will enjoy that you're doing uh, fun art, graphics, making a custom soundtracks. It is something that elevates the game just to a next level. It is not necessary for the players to enjoy the story, to enjoy their characters, but it is a nice thing to add. So I listed here uh, four major maps creators, which I know about and my friends are using. I'm not creating maps myself, but I ask them what they think about each of them. Now, uh, Dungeon Draft and Wonder Draft, they are one-time purchase. All of those I'm listing here have some kind of free trial, but usually if you want, and the free trial is usually restricting you to create a certain amount of maps. But if you pay, you have uh, more tools and unlimited amount of maps you can create. Now, Dungeon Draft is uh, for $20 I'm not sure, dollars or euros one-time purchase and Wondercraft is about 30 and they both have really nice clean art they are compatible uh, with a lot of gameplay platforms and in general they're nice dungeon craft is uh, predominantly for locations and Wondercraft for a whole maps but and they can you can google them up and you can see for yourself if you like them uh, i love them um, <laughs> I I use like it all them. the time <laughs> i couldn't and, live without them and dungeon folk uh is subscribed monthly for i don't know something about five euros it's not too much and it is really versatile now you don't have to use creators if you want to go fancy and create them up. You can do it all the way and draw it on a paper, then scan it, and maybe run it through 
Microsoft Paint or I don't know, uh, make some red crosses there where the treasure lies and you have a map and it works just as well. You can download, download some maps which are already pre-created and are free to use online and so on. So if you do not feel like creating a map, you don't have to, but if you want to try it, here are the options. Now, and most important for the gameplay, I chose those five platforms of which three I am regularly using and one I uh, know as a software, but I'm not using for RPGs. The one I'm not using for RPGs is Tabletop Simulator. We bought it during uh, Corona because me and my friends wanted to play uh, tabletop, tabletop games uh, because we just love them and we had full on uh, withdrawal symptoms when we were shaking because we couldn't play our, uh, our palm. So it was really bad. So it is really good for that. But I find it problematic if you have, if you do not have good computer because it, the software is quite demanding. And it's, it can be from the beginning weird to uh, move in there because it's like virtual, virtual reality when you are moving around the table and but you have, can have figures, you can roll dice, it's really cool. But from the point of view, when you want to be practical and read your information well and know where everybody is, I do not find it so good. Uh, then there is a roll 20 which is, I feel like it was one of the most used, one of the most used uh, gameplay platforms in past few years. It really rocked up during Corona. And I like it a lot, a lot. I like it a lot because it's super versatile. You can do chat games, the text RPG I showed you er earlier, we, play, we are playing it on Roll20 because we can whisper there. We can have multiple characters on one account. We can have character sheets. We have some uh, space next to the... Actually, I can show you uh, Roll20. I preloaded it. Oh, so this is, uh, this is, and um, this is, uh, oh, do you see roll 20? Yes. So, okay. okay. So this is roll 20 here. Sometimes our game master sends us some uh, pictures. Here we have our text space when we are texting for our characters. I have multiple characters on my account because I am playing for some other characters as well. I can, I, we do not have character sheets here, but if we would, I could have them here and look into them. Uh, roll also offers you uh, to uh, roll automatically. You know, roll is really nice, quite simple, intuitive. You can get to it quite easily. It is for free and it offers you everything you need to, ex uh, to execute the campaign. And what is most important, it is not very demanding. You don't have to download any app, anything. Foundry with your tabletop and Fantasy Grounds. I find those two quite similar. They both are, uh, applications you have to download, or programs you have to download into your device. They are a little bit more demanding when it comes to, uh, to the computer, but I am playing on a literal cake cutter and I'm doing fine. Uh, so do not worry, you just cannot like at the same time uh, be, I don't know, playing poker online, but nobody wants that. Uh, they are fairly similar. I am using Fantasy Grounds and I really like how, 
how supportive they are for players who are playing with rule rule oriented rpgs for the first time in fantasy grounds you have uh character sheets and they are helping you calculate how many and which dice you are rolling what you are adding for bonuses and it's really good once you enter all that data of your character in it's really easy to use the character which is nice uh, it is paid service though uh, only one person uh, actually only one uh, the game master has to own the game to be able to invite anybody else and from what i know when i ask my friends it usually is that the party everybody pays a bit from the whole amount and then they are sharing the the entrance code or the yeah the entrance code so that's usually how it works so from what i heard and when it comes to something really uh, super easy to start working with, no login, no do downloading, immediate usage. Uh, we are using Old Bear Rodeo, which is only a uh, uh, web application or a web app when you, where you upload your map and other players can join with the code you send them and you can use uh, things like Folk of War, which are which is helping you to un uh, un to make some things not visible. Or you can use tokens, you can use some basic marking stuff, and that's really all you need. So if you are playing a campaign, which was usually, but which, which was originally not supposed to be using a map, but you are in the middle of a fight or somewhere, and players seems to be seem to be confused and not sure where they are, how many orcs or dwarves they are seeing. You can use Albert Rodeo. It takes no time to make it run. Everybody is uh, can see the map in a moment. They can move their tokens. You can allow them to see what you want them to see, and it is really user friendly. It is super simple. And course and Francis as Francesco mentioned details details really matter and I recommend them uh, music you want to have some nice background chattering or light flutes or whatever comes to your mind that would be fitting uh, so we sometimes have a our game master is uh, he likes uh, writing songs so he is writing our as songs that are part of the story. For instance, there is a riddle hidden in the hidden in the song. We have to listen to the song in a tavern and then, then figure where we are supposed to go or what is happening from the song, which can be real fun. And it again makes you engaged in different way. And graphics uh, make it look nice. Uh, allow players, encourage your players to have uh, profile pictures of their characters. Uh, draw fan art if you are an artistic person. Make things look nice. Show your players pictures when you can. You know, just make colorful and engaging and fun. Now, what I feel uh, to be a real advantage of playing online is that, for instance, with music, when your game master decides that some music is suitable for some scene, you don't have to accept his, what is it, design choice, uh, because you can simply mute the, the source of, uh, of the music and you can put on your own music, which I actually am using quite often because I am really soundtracky person and I cre I'm creating my own soundtracks for each campaign, for each character. And not so often what Game Master is playing really goes with what I have in mind. So I'm playing my own music in the background while I am playing with others. This would be really hard if we were in one room in person. So 
it's a nice touch. I wanted to let you know about this advantage you have. And, and so it's much all for me. Be aware of your limitations of online. Be prepared for uh, online softwares to not work because I did not have one single session where everything would work finally. Like not single one, uh, somebody's internet were down, somebody's connection was unstable, somebody's microphone was not working, somebody's cat jumped from, I don't know, somewhere and break something and something was not working every time. So count on it, uh, make during the session zero, talk with others, what will you do when uh, technical issues occur? Will you continue without the player? Will you be waiting for the player? If you will be waiting for how long? Do they have 15 minutes to repair it? If they do not repair it in time, you will continue. Or will you end the session for the day? You know, it's good to have these things pre-decided in advance. So then you know what you can uh, work with. Uh, now, what I said before, different games, different styles. Uh, some games need to be need, need to have really good video, so you can see what others are doing, how they are. I don't know if they are smiling, if they are not. Others game do not really need video at all. Uh, some need some specific uh, writing. Uh, writing stuff, I don't have words, I'm sorry. For instance, when we are playing our text RPG, we need to have an option to whisper to each other. So that's why we chose Roll because it was the best we could find, uh, best uh, uh, software we could find that would suit our needs. And don't be afraid to keep it simple. Uh, if we have time if you have energy you can improve your uh your campaign but do not get oh, super over focused on creating maps when you do not even have basic story when you do not even have players maybe you know start from the beginning and build it up and that's pretty much it So thank you, Barbara. Uh, I think you were uh, clear enough. Uh, I wonder if, uh, is there any question about this? Uh, or if some of you have some thoughts, who wants to share? And really, you don't have to be afraid to ask or comment on anything. We are here to introduce you to what we like and what we feel is valuable. And we want you to understand it and more, and we will be super happy to tell you anything about it, really. Thank you, Natasha. So, uh, now uh, I'd like uh, to talk with you about uh, something a bit more practical, um, because uh, in this kind of field uh, we uh, there are a lot of words that must be spoken, but uh, in the end it's all about uh, what you're gonna do. And um, I'm trying. I would like to talk uh, about role twenty, some basics information uh, that you need to know. Uh, in order to play, to run a role-playing game, a digital one. So I will share the screen. I don't know if you can see the screen. Okay, great. Yes, we can. Uh, this is a, a common profile on Roll20. Uh, as Barbara said, Roll20 is one of the most uh, popular uh, user-friendly platform. But even though it's the most user, probably one of the most user-friendly, uh, there are some notions uh, to know 
uh, and uh, we today we talked about this. So before um, before the game, you're supposed to create an account. A free one, it's also okay, even though the premium one can unlock a lot of uh, cool features. Uh, let's keep with the premium, the the the, um, the free one. It's it's gonna be okay for now. So we go here, and uh, this is for for instance uh, a a common game that you can uh, easily create, and uh, hit the launch game button. Roll20 is gonna uh, prepare some things and then we'll put you probably on a very blank board, something like this at the beginning. There's a grid, I don't know if you can see. It's gonna be a blank thing, actually. In this blank thing that we call scene, uh, we can put uh, images uh, like maps, like the, the one Barbara said, or a PNC portrait, landscapes, or whatever you think you might need that help you to tell the story. So uh, just uh, consider the scenes that you can uh, add from uh, this uh, left up corner very easily. Consider the screens uh, as uh, spaces for you to experiment, to create. Um, this, for instance, I put this image but actually you can put whatever image you want and today uh, let's try to talk with uh, a very basic uh, a very basic story but be before uh, talking about this let's try to go uh, toward first things to know so number one um, the game uh, the story and the platform as we said so the game uh, dnd 5e is gonna be okay for a beginner, but um, it, even advanced people tend to like this game, uh, even though um, there are many others. Uh, actually, I'm not very fine, uh, fond of uh, this game, but I, I know that it's, uh, there's a huge community. Uh, it's pretty easy after all, and uh, it's very well supported uh, with a lot of materials that can be downloaded or bought for you to uh, run chronicles and, and stuff. Second point, uh, second point as Barbara said, uh, the, um, the audio video on Roll20 actually tends to be unpredictable on Roll20, uh, even though it's possible. Uh, that's why Barbara suggested you to, to try other alternatives uh, like, uh, for example, Zoom or Skype or whatever, you, Discord or whatever you like actually. Uh, and uh, my suggestion is to keep it separate. So uh, Roll20 is best used uh, just for the game normally. And uh, on the other hand, you can run a Discord or a Skype calls or whatever you need to, to establish the link for uh, the audio video things. And then the third point, uh, it's about the material. Uh, before entering the Roll20 things, I suggest you to, uh, to collect some materials. And the materials can be collected, uh, once again, as Barbara said, on Pinterest, on Google, on uh, internet, pretty easily, actually. Uh, for example, if you uh, just like, I don't know, search a fantasy tavern, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> you just click right here, put the images, and then, bam, uh, tons of uh, portraits, some of uh, cool things that you can use at your advantage because they are free. And uh, you can download them and you can uh, just put inside your game pretty easily, actually. And uh, so my suggestion is, once again, to prepare a little bit before Roll20. So it's going to be a bit smoother uh, when you prepare the session. Then some practical stuff. Uh, let's say you have done all of it or most of it. You're uh, in a blank space and you're supposed to know how to move. So the pen is with the right click on the mouse. You can uh, do like this. You can create the little hand and uh, you know you can pen the, the visual, but you can also zoom in or zoom out with the little wheel on your mouse. 
So with these two commands, uh, you control pretty everything. The left click, it's actually about more uh, the selecting option. In the left up corner, you can see the select uh, tool, the, select, the little square on the uh, left up corner. And uh, you can actually move the things. This is a, for a text, but you can move uh, uh, images or tokens. What about the tokens? So tokens, let's say there are little figures, little images uh, or your, uh, of the people uh, on your map. We are gonna talk about this with a map. So it's a bit easier for you to understand, but it's uh, actually, it's a very simple concept. There is a map and there are all the things you can move that represent the character in the map moving. So it's uh, gonna be really easy when I'll show you with a map in front. Five, the fifth point, the division in scenes. As I said, here in the page, page two bar on the right up corner, you can see the, the, the scenes. Some of the scene I already prepared, but it, as I showed you, it's really easy to, to create new pages, just one click. And, and then you can just go inside whatever you think you might need. This, for example, is an interior location of a church or a temple or something like this. Um, with the visual impact, uh, you might notice that it's a bit easier for you to, in, to be engaged, to be, to, uh, to be part of it, the, the narration. But there's, of course, there's also going to be a little of narration. A cool master will uh, give you some uh, cool description of what you feel inside of this place, why. Uh, you are in this place uh, and uh, what you want to obtain, what your, uh, what's your purposes, uh, maybe someone you want to meet, or um, I don't know, you, there are tons of possibility, it depends on the story. So as I said previously, also the story uh, can be really, uh, it's actually really important. And I suggest you to, to have uh, the clearest uh, idea about the story you want to tell, because uh, this will save you tons of time and today uh, bah, 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 ah, yeah uh, sixth point the grid this is the grid uh, as I you probably might see this is gonna help you uh, to move the tokens I'll show you one let's say this one is gonna be okay here it is I don't know if you can see this uh, the little uh, uh, ginger guy. I think it's a dwarf or a gnomish, probably. <laughs> and uh, this token, uh, as part of the material you can easily find on internet, is going to be uh, probably one of the uh, character uh, ruled by one of your player. And you can move it with the arrows on your keyboard or with your mouse, or whatever you want, uh, just whenever you, whatever you want. And this is going to be handy with a map on the background. I'll show you this one. This is a sci-fi setting, for example. Zoom out a little bit. So it's a, probably a, some facility of some sort or probably a spaceship. And uh, these are uh, tokens. They are a bit different as you might notice, but it's the same, the same concept actually. The red guys are supposed to be at the enemies. The, the, the really tough guy who want to do something. And this is this, uh, the protagonist. As I said, the token can be moved pretty easily. And uh, you, it's, um, it's helpful in order to recreate uh, conflicts and uh, battles. In particular, during th those um, points, the map can be really handy. During the narration, the, the talking, uh, like uh, you, met, uh, you meet some, um, some guy and you talk with him and doing stuff like that. It's, it's uh, not really a necessity, but it can be a necessity a bit more during the conflicts because uh, some of your players uh, can ask you, okay, but where am I exactly? Uh, am I in front of the bad guys? Am I, am I at their side? And this kind of things is really troublesome if you consider that our, our role-playing game party can be three, four, five, or six people, or maybe more. And uh, this can be a bit confusing if you rely just on your chat, on your narration, on your storytelling, because you are supposed to make the clear thing for six people or more. 
but with a map or with something like this, it can be a bit easier. So if some, uh, players say, okay, I don't want to fight with them, they seem tough, uh, I just want to escape. It's a bit easy for all the other people to consider where is the, the person in particular and uh, how to deal with that in real time. So uh, this is the main use of the grid, the map and the tokens. Let's come back a bit and uh, let's talk about uh, seven the point number seven the layers and the stratification uh so um in roll 20 but also in other virtual tabletop there's this concept uh, it's about the layers and normally there are uh, there are at least uh, three layers the map layer the token layer as i show you like this but also the gm layer so th this is about a bit more for the narrator, for the storytelling. Uh, in order to participate in this, you don't need to know the concept of layer. But if you want to run a game, uh, of course you do, because uh, for example, if we want to continue in this part, let's say we have this situation. This uh, protagonist is supposed to, I don't know, keep this item is supposed to be, I don't know, uh, an artifact or a bomb or whatever you think you need. Uh, but probably, um, let's say you don't want to show him immediately that he is right there. Maybe he's concealed uh, in some way, hidden in some aura or whatever. And you can put it in the GM layer. You might see that now the token is opaque. And uh, this is uh, because uh, players is not uh, are not uh, supposed to see this item anymore, but we see as DM because it's the GM layer. Let's consider them as a stratification of the hidden objects. This is for the token, the token layer. So um, it's more about the the thing that moves around the area, and normally are characters of or antagonists like this, and they are pretty easily to to move, as you see. But there's also another layer, the map layer, in which there is the image of the map itself. So it's a bit uh, a way for the Roll20 things to, to clean a bit what are the things in and in which layer. Normally, we'll, you will start to recreate something like this, uh, just putting the map in the map layer. And you can do it uh, like uh, putting an image, right-clicking like this, and you can see this layer. And you, uh, the, my advice is to put the, the map probably uh, in the, uh, the, the layer I've been talking about, the map layer, because uh, you won't move anymore. Because uh, we will move to the upper layer, to the token layer right now. And so in this layer, when I click on the map, nothing is moving and it's a bit more stable and you can as a dm move freely all the tokens around without the fear of moving also the map you know you can you can do a bit more of chaotic things like like this i'm moving the whole map away and uh, that can be a bit uh, confusing for the people so just keep this in mind the map layer is for the map very easy the tokens are for the tokens layer you wouldn't bet and uh, finally, the GM layer, this is completely optional. It's okay just to consider the first two, the map and the token are okay. But if you want to, I don't know, to show the players something that appeared immediately, for, for example, the antagonist, maybe they were invisible for some armor or for whatever reason, you can put for, uh, before in the GM layer, then go in the, uh, the GM layer overlay, in the left up corner. And from this moment, put it in the token layer when you decide you want to show to the player like this, bam. And comes back from being opaque to being fully visible. So this is just a concept to keep it in mind. And I suggest you to experiment because uh, I think that it might be uh, a bit more uh, astonishing at the beginning, but it's very easy when, as soon as you get into it and as soon as you try it. So these are the things I wanted to talk about at, um, from the very beginning. And now we dive a bit into a story. 
uh, the story, um, let, let's say, uh, it's, let's keep in mind a very simple story. This, let's say that this guy, this is a, a, a portrait, once again, I downloaded uh, all the images I put in there. And uh, let's say this guy is supposed to uh, accompany you, ask you to, to be with him, uh, uh, for um, to to be to fight uh, some enemies that uh, are inside of uh, a strange place. Now let's talk about this uh, fantasy setting, and uh, let's talk about a swamp, for example, or a forest. And if uh, the party accepts, probably after a journey, you will find something like this the right spot, the entrance of this strange tower. And as soon as you go inside of it, you will find that it's connected with some uh, caves underground. And, this, and the things can be tricky. Of course, I'm, I'm just skipping, I'm just uh, moving forward. But in every place, for every encounter, the DM will talk about this, will describe a lot of the things that happens wait for the players to answer and go on. The party explores the, the caves, but the, then find out that they are not so easy to be explored. This, for example, is a map. It's a completely different uh, thing, but it's uh, shared the, the things that we needed a cave. So let's bring again our little guy that represent the whole party, the whole group. And actually, we can move it and uh, decide to explore the caves. There are several um, decisions to be made. You can go uh, in uh, opposite way. You will find uh, obstacles, probably. You can find antagonists, traps, or whatever. And when we go from the very end of it, let's say here, you will probably find the bad guy. It's a kind of a monster or something like this. And after a huge fight, a cruel one, there's a little plot twist. And he, can, he discovers, the party discovers that the, the guy from the beginning is actually uh, someone who just wants exp uh, to exploit the, the party and the, the death of the party, leaving them alone before the main conflict. This is just a simple story, you know? But if the party succeed in uh, facing the antagonist, the, the monster, the draugr, or whatever you want to call it, and uh, he, he succeeded in uh, finding uh, the truth and uh, come back from the, the dangerous place, a story has been unfolded, you know? And uh, the party can des decide uh, if uh, look after this guy that betrayed the party, or just moving on or whatever, it's up to the party. But this is just an example for me to show you how simple can be to, sh to, to describe a story. It's just about uh, how the flow is and uh, what, kind of, uh, uh, what kind of pictures, what kind of maps, what kind of tokens you might need. Even though at the beginning, I know it's really difficult because uh, in particular, when you're a beginner, you don't know a lot of stuff. That's why, it's important to experiment and uh, don't be afraid to, uh, to, to do some mistakes. It's really okay, it's really natural for the flow. But the point is that when you step forward, step into the process, uh, you will find that uh, uh, Rule 20, but in general, a lot of virtual tabletop can, at your, can be at your disposal to tell the stories. And if you are a facilitator, if you are a YouTube worker, you can use this kind of storytelling to, to, um, to follow your objective, to follow your aims, educational one. For example, you can put some tests, some riddles, some uh, <laughs> mathematic things in order to, uh, to open a sealed, a magic sealed door or uh, whatever, uh, some linguistical riddles and that can be useful if you think that maybe this play is, um, is for, I don't know, uh, foreign people that uh, still might uh, understand your language.
and can be used in a lot of different ways. So this is just a very simple thing. And uh, I don't want to talk uh, much more because I'm afraid I can uh, put some too much material <laughs> from the beginning, but just keep in mind that the, the, for the visual part, you will work with these tabs, these scenes. And for the music part, uh, you will work in this category over here. And you just, you know, you can add some, uh, uh, some tracks you prob probably already uh, downloaded and just put inside your game because as Barbara said, it's really important. And the details in the, uh, this kind of role-playing games uh, are very fascinating. It can be a, loot, a huge difference. So I think uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, but if some of you have some questions, feelings or thoughts, or, or if some of you have tried uh, as a DM or maybe just as a player, it's okay if you want to talk. I also think it would be nice to mentioned that a lot of gameplay softwares like Roll20, uh, Fantasy Grounds, uh, Foundry, WTT offer you to buy or use pre-made campaigns. When you do not feel like creating your own story or you just like something you've seen somewhere, you can use that. For instance, when there was a new system of City of Mist, we wasn't sure if we, we weren't sure if we want to uh, buy the core books and start playing by the system. So we bought a one shot, uh, played on Roll20. And the advantage of the pre create one shots or campaigns in general is that everything is set up. You have the maps finished, you have the tokens, you have the story, you have the encounters and you are just executing you as a game master, the story for others. And that is, some people think that this is uh, cheating or something, it definitely is not. You are giving it your creative energy and you are uh, making the story come, come to life. So this is just um, a hint for you. If you do not feel like creating your own story just yet, you can use pre-creative campaigns, which are uh, compatible with uh, most of the gameplay tools. Sure, I completely agree. Uh, and I was thinking that uh, even in other arts, if you think about it, like uh, in paintings, even Raphael or Michelangelo at the start, they started copying other things already made for, you know, um, to, to interiorize the autonomy. Uh, and this is very much applicable to, to our setting, to our things. It's, in my opinion, it's, a, an, it's an art, a completely an art by itself. And uh, at the beginning, if you copy, it's uh, just, it's completely fine and can help you a lot during the struggle of the very few day, very first days as a dungeon master. And, uh, Yes, it can be a bridge toward your expectations. What do you think about this? Does anybody want to say something? I'm not sure if this is a demonstration of uh, attention lost, or if just <laughs> we left you speechless, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> or if we are just too good, but it's okay. Um, even if you want to say something in the chat, it's it's also okay. Um, so if uh, some of you is a bit shy, don't don't be afraid at all. You can just chat, and. Um, Regarding in the, the final part, regarding the, a little assignment, we, we have been talked a lot today, but I agree. I think that it's uh, very important to, do, to keep it practical, to keep it simple. And uh, there's, uh, there's no uh, an easier way to do that if you 
just just try to experiment so that's why i want to show with you this little slide over here a little assignment if uh, some of you wants to try wants to experiment it's not about a test it's just for yourself you know for your personal growth and uh, i dare you <laughs> to try and uh, to prepare an, an online LARP or role-playing game. It's, it, it's okay to copy, as I said, it's okay to download uh, free material. It's okay to experiment because uh, this can be uh, the real difference between, between uh, you know, some that just uh, didn't try it, but, uh, or, or on the contrary, some that uh, instead uh, stepped forward and uh, make the difference actually. And uh, if some of you want to try in during the, the last uh, webinar, uh, the fifth webinar, uh, we will talk about this and you will find colleague of ours uh, to talk about it. So thank you for your attention. Thank you for your presence. For you. thank you for everything. We I hope that uh, uh, it was somehow interesting, and uh, I think that's it from my side. I don't know if uh, Barbara or, or Elias or wants to say something. Thank you very much, uh, Francesco and Barbara. Um, from my side, I will be sending you the evaluation forms of uh, this webinar and some extra information. So feel free to fill it up. It uh, takes one to two minutes, but it's very, very helpful for uh, us, the organizations and the whole project itself. Thank you for your attention. And I thank you for coming here, for being interested into RPGs and LARPs. Hopefully you will make your own campaigns soon enough. And so. I think that's it and uh, goodbye everybody and uh, have a great evening and uh, hopefully a bright future in the mm -hmm. role playing game stuff. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Bye everybody.